This and all episodes of the podcast have been brought to you by our generous patrons over at Patreon The Daisy Podcast. If you're interested in finding out more about how you can support the show each week, then please click the link in the description down below to find out more information about Patreon The Daisy Podcast. Thank you for your support. Okay, folks, and welcome to the podcast, episode 28 this week. Um, back Woo! to... Yeah, I know. It's it's blown me away just that we're still going, yeah. Um, absolutely phenomenal. Ben, Brim, welcome as usual, fellas. Afternoon, good evening. Hello. And tonight we have one of our special guests. The second one, Derleth, is running a bit late. Um, but who we have with us right now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to meet my, uh, what did I call you in um, Discord the other day? Help me uh, dump Gra Kenobi. You're my only hope. The man who has been instrumental <clears throat> in helping me get my server off the ground, dump Gra, one of the nicest people in the Daisy community. <clears throat> Hello. And also, Bodhi's too nice. No, mate, no. You're um, an incredibly... Uh, uh, I think someone described you as one of the most patient people they've ever seen when dealing with an absolute itard like myself um, and just slowly walking me through and explaining me through some of the most basic things <laughs> that you could probably do with your eyes closed, but it's like fucking rocket science to me, mate. So I owe you immensely for the amount of help you've given not just me but i've heard you've done it with a lot of other people as well mate and that sort of generosity needs to be um mm -hmm. praised mate there's a lot of people out there who use and abuse uh, not a lot of people who give so uh freely of their time so a big thank you from me mate thanks you're welcome making you feel uncomfortable aren't i very, very. And Derlis just joined us. How are you, buddy? Oh, hi. I uh, just got back to the house. Nice, bit, uh, nice. Bit out of... Been out and about? Yeah, uh, we were... We had a lot of time, actually. Went to do, like, like typical Saturday grocery stuff. Uh, yep. uh, it was uh, thick traffic, so uh, a bit... I'm a bit stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't be stressed because you're a few minutes late mate there's that that's not an issue at all you're actually early um we just started a bit earlier because we had everyone ready to go so yeah but you're pretty much on time mate so welcome welcome tell us a bit about Thanks. yourself oh I, I don't know I, i'm i'm me no but <laughs> um like i i wrote in the bio i'm uh i'm an old player or well oldish i'm 47 uh swedish uh, and um, basically just like playing computer games and uh, yep. started with all of this server stuff uh, out of uh, like curiosity basically you used to be a mariner you worked on merchant vessels you said and later worked for the navy yeah exactly uh, yep. I worked actually uh, land based for the navy in, in surveillance like radar surveillance uh, stuff which yep. was uh, very interesting and now you do maritime infrastructure, lighthouses, buys, and stuff. Um, and you said yeah, you've been the. Ex Sorry. Yeah, exactly. E exactly. Uh, kind of uh, planning and and projects with the building new fairways and uh, stuff like that. Yep. And you started on uh, playing pong on a black and white TV, and later on the Commodore sixty four and Amiga five hundred. But I've yeah. been been told I have to ask you something. Apparently, yeah. you'd love clouds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, it's it's become a kind of a meme. Now, now I've, uh, I I loved how the sky looked in the early earlier versions of DayZ, and I really didn't like when they uh, removed the true sky uh, yep. uh, from DayZ. I know I know why they did it, and Sumrak has been explaining it for me more than once, and I I keep bringing it up. So I I think he's sick of me. But uh, but uh, the, the clouds used to look much better. Nice. Yeah, I, I got told um, to ask you that question, and uh, Foxy just um, uh, reminded me of it as well. Uh, Moonshine reminded me as well that, yeah, someone said you um, – who was it again? 
I should remember. Who was it again, Moonshine, who said that we had to ask that question? But, yeah. <clears throat> what else did you have in your guest bio? Um, passion about Daisy, and you spent too many hours white knighting on the game on the Steam forums and other media. I run my own Daisy server where I try to configure the game how I like it. Hardcore survival with lots of infected. And I've made a few simple config tweak mods. I'd like to get more into advanced modding, but having time enough to learn it properly is an obstacle. I also dabble with video editing, but to be honest, my YouTube is mostly just for uploading fun clips, and I would never call myself a content creator. Mate, I wouldn't call myself a content creator, but at the end of the day, it is content you're creating, mate. So you're a content creator. Wear that badge and wear it proudly. Hey, Ben. Hi. Yeah, go Hi. <laughs> Ben's a content creator now, doing quite well on Twitch. Oh, gosh, don't you make me blush, you know. You're getting there, mate. You're getting there. It's just about grinding it out. And if you're doing it for the right reasons, which is having fun, people will gravitate. Yeah, I... I don't um I don't consider it a grind. I think if you if you consider it a grind it's like Yeah. Maybe not doing it for the right reasons. I enjoy it so. Mm -hmm. And Dump, let's have a look at what Dump wrote in his bio. I go by the name Dumpra. I'm 31 years old. I'm a disabled person that loves to learn and get better. I'm married to a wonderful wife of 9 years, 17 years together in total and have three cats and a dog. So hang about 17 years together. You've been dating since you were 14. They're correct. High school sweethearts. That's yeah. fucking beautiful, man. That's beautiful. It's kind of funny because I actually ended up meeting my wife online back when it wasn't cool to do so. Yeah. And uh, the reason I did that is because I was related to over half my town. Like I was. <laughs> 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 yeah. You and Moonshine both. <laughs> oh, what else have you got in here? Um, uh, I like video games that encourage community interaction and require a community to survive, like Daisy and Eve Online. I grew up in a small town learning how to woodwork and many other skills as well as blacksmithing. I was part of a, what's an SCA group? Society for Creative Acronisms. Yep. We dress up in armor and beat each other with heavy wooden rattan sticks. Yep, okay. And get drunk uh, at night. Um, known as a severed hand, and we learned a lot of cold weather camping and survival skills. I am a second in charge admin on a server known as NewDawnedAZ.com. The server is a hardcore server with the idea of balance making the server not only fun but challenging while being immersive. The server has been around for two and a half years now, and we're not going anywhere. Well, I beg to differ, mate. You said you've been um, actually getting some decent numbers of late 40, 50 players at a time. Yeah, we're still small compared to other servers. Yeah, but you you don't need to be the biggest server as long as you've got a good community. Um, you know, well, I, I'm lucky if I get five people on my server, and I'm happy with that because it's five people. You've only been around enjoying. for like a month and a half, buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Trust me, you'll pick up quicker. Uh, I, I live in the smallest um, Daisy community in the world, mate. So I, I don't have high hopes, but as long as enough people enjoy it, mate, I'll keep on doing it. Um, what else have we got here? Um, personally, I have created many uh, useful mods for our server and shared one major one with the community called Am I Making? Um, and while I am proud of that mod, what I'm most proud of is the people who have helped me and the people who have been able to help. I have been put on as a contributor for major popular mods like Mass as Many Item Overhaul, Cannabis Plus, and helped with many other mods with models, scripting, and such. One of the few people I've had the honor of teaching is Lad, and he made himself an amazing flashlight mod that I feel is quite well done and needed. I also stream on Twitch some of my modding work, ones that are not too boring. Haha. Ha. Um, overall, I enjoyed learning and teaching others, and I'm always happy to help troubleshoot and learn new things. Um, here's his Twitch. <clears throat> and if you are interested in learning this sort of stuff, folks, I highly recommend you give him a follow. Like I said, um, I can wake up in the morning and realize, oh my God, I've managed to fuck my server again. And Dump's usually still awake when I wake up. Um, and I think he dreads it now. But I send this, hey, buddy. Hey, how you doing? And he replies back to me. And he knows what's coming. Do, do you mind if I um, have a chat with you? Because I, I might have broken something again. And, it, like, even the, the, the thing that I broke last time, it wasn't really I broke it. Um, expansion came out with an update. And me just being the... the intellectual bloody intellectual property fucking retard that i am i 
didn't read any of the things. And he patiently, and all the while I was sitting there going, oh, so everything I needed to do was already spelled out for me in their Discord. And all I needed to do was go and read it. But he didn't say that to me. He just patiently posted me the links um, and said, here's what you need to do. And here's this link. And you need to do this. You need to go to the init.c. Where's the init.c? And he just patiently talks me through it. He's an amazing fucking man. An amazing fucking man who deserves a lot of credit. You've got the patience of an absolute saint. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I might get mad about you calling me a saint. <laughs> so, Derleth, tell us a bit about your server, mate. Yeah, it's... Uh... It started, uh, I've had it for a year and a half now, I think. Uh, it's basically just a me and friends server. Yep. I ma made it to have like a, my own playground and, and do create a server like like I want it to be. Uh, so it's a hardcore survival. I, I don't like to use the word hardcore, uh, but it's a survival server and it's uh, created to be both fun and challenging to survive against the environment. So I have I have like five times the vanilla amounts of zombies and uh, half half the food, but uh, and uh, reduced you reduced the military kinds of weapons and so on. Uh, but uh, the, to me, the the, the servers uh, like I li I I like to play on it, <laughs> so yep. I do a lot. So and that's probably that's the most important thing. It. Yeah, I, I know there's a bit of um, controversy, and Ben, you'd probably be up to speed on this as well, uh, about admins actually playing on the server that they're on. Uh, but I'm kind of torn on it because I can understand where admin abuse happens. But at the end of the day, like, Ben, you've created the server that you want to play on as well, not just what everyone else wants to play. So what do you think yeah. about that, mate? Um, I'm, I'm all for... You know I play on my server all the time. If I didn't play on my server, I wouldn't run it. Simple as that. I wouldn't do it. Um, there's, you know, at the very least, if you if you're going to go through all this effort to create something like that, you should be able to use it. Um, yeah. I know there's a big crowd of people that say, don't you know, if you play on your own server, you, you must use your admin tools. Like, the, like the, there's a group that, of people that think that if you've got admin tools, the temptation to use them is too great, and that you must use them somewhere. Yeah, that's one thing I have. I mean, I, I, in one sense, I have really enjoyed streaming for the last couple of months, almost every day, for all the time that I'm on the server, and people can see that I barely ever touch my admin tools ever. Yeah. Um, so it's it's, it's kind of <laughs> nice to show people that admins can play on a server and not abuse the admin tools and everything else, and die like everybody else and play like everyone else. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, anybody who's says that you shouldn't play on your own server i firmly disagree with them yeah yeah i, I like i i for, for for the longest time i didn't even add any admin tools uh, to the server they only did that now when expansion came out and actually had uh, the cot as a uh, like a requirement uh, so then i had to set up uh, the community online tools and uh, made it work and I noticed that it's a good thing to have admin tools when you are adding new stuff and testing stuff. It's so much simpler to just uh, move away to some secluded corner in the world and spawn the stuff you want to test and test it and yeah. see what's not working. So I've been able to give modders feedback, you know, and this this and this thing is broken and so on, and I've been able to test it. So so uh, I like having it now, but I, I don't use it when playing. Absolutely not. I mean, also, if you're trying to grow a server in a community, part of being, you know, if you grow in a community, you've got to be part of it. So how are you going to grow how are you going to grow a community on a server when you're like, right, I want you all to play on my server, but I'm not going to play with you. I, I, you know, so when you, especially when you're trying to grow a server, playing on it is super important. Super important, I think. Scarlet just raising a good point there, though. Not much admin abuse possible on console. Um... <laughs> Those poor console plebs, they just get battered every <laughs> fucking day, don't they? But um, you, you you yourself work on a server as well, Brim. Have you guys ever had any accusations of it? 
Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I do actively admin abuse, but not in a not in a proper arsehole way, not in like a give myself god mode way. I do it trolly, and some of the and I only do it to select people who are expecting it. So, for example, I'll go on and I'll spawn, you know, I'll spawn like a a, a banana and two kiwis and put it in some, you know, put it in someone's tent or something in the shape of a penis and testicles, <laughs> and people will come back and say, "Oh, fuck's sake, Brim's been here, been here again," you know. And I do things like that, but you know, I th I think, you know, I think we all get kind of get lumped into into this idea that that, like you say, having admin tools means you're automatically going to be an arsehole about it and use it and. I think it does depend on the person, um, you know, but I think we, I think everyone who runs a server gets painted with that same brush of assuming that we're all going to do it, that, that admin abuse is inevitable, which, you know, clearly isn't isn't the case. I mean, I've played on Ben's server for several years now on and off, and never once have I ever been concerned with, you know, oh, something's happened. Do I think an admin's had a pro, you know, had something to do with it? Never once. So for everyone to get sort of lumped in with that and painted with that same brush, I think it's just, it's fucking ludicrous to be fair. I agree. Usually the reports from people say that you're abusing admin tools or whatever, come in right after you've killed them. Usually. Yeah. yeah. As soon as they find out you're an admin or something and you've killed them, or you, you, or you've used the tools. That's the accusations that we get regularly. Now, Dump, what about on or your not? server, mate? Do you guys limit yourself from certain things just to make sure that, um, no one can ever accuse you guys of admin abuse? Well, I mean, we still get accused. There's two types of admin abuse. There's one of real admin abuse, and then there's a second one, which I get all the time from people coming from other servers as well as on our server. That happens every now and then, where they accuse admin abuse, but they have no proof, and they won't show any proof, period. Yeah. They just yeah. claim there was admin abuse, which is like, okay, well, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm claiming you're full of shit. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> but, like, on our server... I don't play on our server with my admin account, period. And I'm, I'm very forthright with this. I have an alternate account. Nobody knows the name of it. It has no powers. I play on our server. I have fun. I enjoy myself. I get to see what the loot economy is like. I get to see how players are enjoying everything, where things are spawning, uh, how hard zombies are, the animals, all that kind of stuff. But nobody knows who I am, so nobody can claim if I kill them, I admin abused because they don't know I'm an admin. And I have no powers. Good way to deal with it. Yeah, I think nowadays as well with the with the current sort of set of admin tools we've got. I mean, again, it still comes down to that having that self control, which for a lot of us is very easy just to not fucking activate them. But with like community online tools, for example, you know, you have to turn them on. There's a key bind to turn them on, and then you can open the sidebar and start going into your tools and doing things. You know, so. I think it's it's very easy just to not press that button and just continue on with your with your game. Agreed, I you, definitely. I, I, also, I like with the admin tools that there's a visual and an audio notification yes. when they're toggled. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Also, another thing people should consider is if you have a server with admins like our my server, me and my fellow admin keep each other in check, and I'm not talking about just like talking to each other, but like. Our admin tools log everything we do with admin tools. So if someone claims I abuse powers, all my ad fellow admin has to do is go in, look at the logs, and go, yep, he did, or nope, he didn't. That's that's how I've caught two naughty admins in the past and got rid of them, and that's how I've also defended myself loads of times when we've been accused of admin, tool, admin, admin abuse. Pull the log up, and it shows the dates, uh, the date and time, and obviously, you're being accused of something, and it shows that not one tool's been used. You, yeah, you it's really cool. Covered Especially away. Like online tools. Mm. Yeah. The other, the other good thing as well, Ben. Away. The other good thing as well, Ben, is um, if you do it live when you're streaming, so people could see what you're actually doing. So there's no question of what you're doing. Like I've noticed, um, Anarchy as well is uh, doing videos. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of still on the fence on them, um, but um, admin catches cheaters. And he clearly shows what he can and can't do um, when he's going around. Yeah, I've I've done this myself, mate. I actually made it a stream feature one time when I had two very naughty boys on my server. So we uh, TP'd them to the middle of a giant maze um, and made them beat the out of each other, um, and then banned them anyway. It was brilliant. It was nice. <laughs> 
<laughs> nice. spawning aliens and bears on them and everything. It was brilliant. It was entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I just the thing I worry about. Like, I enjoyed it as well because I can see people saying those videos are great. I've enjoyed them, but I just worry that sometimes giving them attention. Um, you know, I know this is kind of ironic coming from me, uh, but giving them attention is possibly the worst thing you could do. Um, you know, it might set them start them on the road to bigger and worse at things. Ninety nine percent of the time, I'd agree with not glorifying cheating in any way. But I think the occasional little uh, bit of playtime with a naughty person doesn't, you know, doesn't hurt too much. It was, uh, now, does he like show these people's display names slash other things? Yeah. Or is it just in game? No, he, Sorry, no he doesn't dock them, just their in game name. No, and... no, 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 no. Okay, good, good. Yeah. No, no you don't give out people's details, <laughs> shit. Because no. I know I mean, a couple of servers who like to drag people's names through the mud and it's just no. not very nice. No, no, we use um we, we share our ban list, our ban list shared on um CF tools so people can look up our bands anyway and choose whether they want to do them. But um aside from that, we don't no, we don't dox people. Oh yeah, ban lists are great, but going through and pretty much putting in Discord all the details and stuff like that and dragging someone through the mud kind of just sucks. No, I've, that's never happened in my community. I don't, I've, well, that's good. I've, I've never I've, for, to be honest, I've never I've heard of somebody doing that to a cheater before. I guess they'd have to. They must have done something really bad for somebody to go to that effort. Oh, surely. Now, speaking of servers, yeah. um, I found something out tonight as well, which was quite sad to hear. Um, Fubar Bundy is closing um, his server down. Wasn't that doing pretty well? I was going to say, but he was getting some half decent numbers on that, wasn't he? I know he was. Uh, but I'll read the message. Um, give me a second. I'll share my screen so you guys can see it as well. Um, uh, screen one, go live. So, I, hi everyone. I have an announcement that will come as a bit of a shock uh, to a lot of you, but one I have been evaluating myself for some time now. Although earning, running and administrating the server has been a great learning experience, it has also been a very time-consuming endeavour. So much so that I no longer have the time required to continue running the server. I will be closing the server down at the end of the month. Why? The main reason is I simply do not have the time the server needs to run smoothly, fresh and issue free. I have spent every day since the release of the server constantly working on the back end of the server to the point where it has consumed all of my limited time. Not only has the server been a very time consuming endeavour, it has also been a very stressful and frustrating experience. We haven't been able to provide a server the way we would want it due to mods that would conflict and or cause issues with each other. Expansion mod has also been a giant ball of stress and frustration with its long list of issues that never seem to get fixed. I have spent the past months constantly troubleshooting, patching and attempting to fix nagging issues rather than being able to improve the server and provide new and fresh mods and or experiences and every time we have tried there is always issues to prevent us from doing so. What now? We will leave the server open and running as normal for the remainder of the month, five days, for those of you who wish to use all their loot. At the end of the month, I will be taking the server offline. I will in the following weeks also take down this Discord also. I would like to thank everyone that has joined the server in the Discord and everyone that has supported us, all the Nitro boosters and everyone that has been a part of and enjoyed the server. I'm sorry this decision has been made and I hope you can understand. Thank you for your time and support. Take care and stay safe. So he mm. kind of threw, um, yeah, <coughs> uh, the ones... Um, Popped him, but he, yeah. he he kind of threw expansion under the bus a bit there. Yeah, I, I'm already just from the I don't I don't know Fubar very well or anything, but already just from listening to that, I kind of feel like, and a lot of people do this, underestimate what it takes to run a server. Yeah. Um, like problems with mods is just part and parcel of running a modded server. It mm. takes time to deal with any. Mods come out all the time that have problems from the smallest one to the, the biggest one. It takes time to iron issues out. We've had this discussion before about how no amount of testing is equal to giving the public something and letting them have at it. So, and it seems like there's a trend like like the ones picked up on. It's just like every time now, it's just throw people just throw expansion under the bus. And I don't get why they copying all the blame all the time because loads of mods have problems all the time. Aside from expansion, yeah. um, and I mean, I think we was, I think there's going to be some chat about expansion later. But like, you know, I'm sort of a part, a part of the team, a little yeah. part of it. But 
the, the way updates and things are being done now and addressed and the way problems are being fixed is night and day to like months back and it's uh, things are getting done rapidly now and and the, the 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 quality of the mod is improving a lot so i mean you know what what we've had a we've had a big major daisy update recently and then expansion have fixed a load of problems and maybe there was a couple of hiccups with it you know for a couple of days but like the gain that's been you know the game we've had and the amount of change you've got to expect there's going to be a couple of problems so yeah i feel like he may have um i feel like he's maybe underestimated what the work involved and the, the what's involved in running <clears> a server <throat> and he's he's already quite a busy guy so i'd imagine that he hasn't got much spare time aside from you know doing his content stuff so it's probably it's probably eating away far too much of his time yeah mm. i think i think i can only guess that that's probably that server is probably the reason why he hasn't uploaded in so long. Like I jumped onto his YouTube channel the other day and the last video he uploaded was like eight months ago. Yeah. So, you know, it's, right. it's understandable at the end of the day, you know, I mean, I've, I'm don't hold myself in anywhere near as high regard as people like Ben, when it comes to running servers, because, you know, I just do the sort of the community side of things. I don't do the back end shit because I wouldn't know what I was looking at, but even, even for the short amount of stuff I do, I can, I can see why it, you know he he does upload so infrequently to youtube now um but yeah i think yeah throwing like say throwing shade at expansion like that seems a little bit it's almost like the easy way of going it's like the easy cop out of you know hold if, if you've got an issue with hold your hands up and just say look it was more i didn't anticipate it being quite the way it was you know i can't do it anymore i'm really sorry you know and that's the end of it but I mean, as, as as much flack as sometimes, you know, various mods, not just expansion, kind of deserve to a degree. I think it does seem like a bit of an easy, almost like a bit of an easy cop out. A punching you know, bag, as uh, the one called it. But yeah, um, Dump Dry, you've just taken expansion off of your server, haven't you? Yeah, we had a few reasons to do so. Uh, well, you we had three three major reasons, and none of them had to do with how expansion itself overall was uh, functioning. It was to do with uh, our community wasn't very happy with expansion. It was buggy. They were I was constantly having to fix it for them, but we were holding true and trying to push through it, right? But they wanted it gone eventually. The second thing was Manila right now has a bug. Only so many scripts can be loaded through mods. And expansion, because it's such a large mod, loads a lot of scripts. You know the default bug I'm talking about. The thing is, is because expansion has so many scripts, it basically meant that New Dawn's development was going to come to a standstill, or we were going to have to continuously remove other mods besides expansion to allow New Dawn development. And then uh, the third and final reason, uh, man, I just forgot that one. Uh, that's sorry, me. brain. Fart. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, Yeah, I just totally spaced the th um, third reason. That's all right. Oh, and uh, the third reason was every time expansion had an update, while I was able to fix the things, expansion was never made for hardcore servers like mine. And I don't mean that bad towards expansion. It's just it wasn't designed for hardcore experience like we wanted. So we had to like modify and change a lot of things. And while that was okay, it did take a lot of testing and effort. And it was just... You know, when those three things put together is like, okay, maybe we should just remove expansion until this vanilla bug is fixed with the scripts, and then we can re-explore it. But expansion overall, there's no fault in them adding new scripts. There's no fault in them having bugs. But, you know, just those three things made us want to remove it. And what about you, Derleth? Have you ever dabbled with expansion on your server? Derleth? I think he's fallen asleep. <laughs> bored him to death, I think. No, that's uh, all to right. be fair, we we we've been talking on our server for a little while about um whether or not we should Hello. remove expansion as well. So I, I think it's quite Hello. it is a bit of a topic of yeah, conversation we can hear you now. at the moment. Oh yeah, good. I, yeah. I've muted myself. I don't know why. No. I was, I was that... talking and you were ignoring me. <laughs> no, we couldn't hear you, mate. But um yeah, no, so no. have you ever dabbled with expansion on your server? 
Yeah, I actually added it uh, on release uh, in 107, just to, just before 108 released. And yep. then I removed it again uh, with all the problems that came with 108. And then I've kind of kept it off, uh, looking at, uh, like, keeping an eye on the updates and so on. So I added it back now with a 109. And I managed to configure it uh, just the way I want it. So it's back on my server now and working well. Which might be because I disable like eighty percent of the mod, but because I I more or less only use the boats and the map changes. See, I've got it on my server, which is kind of ironic um, with what Dumpgrass said um, about um, it not really being suited to hardcore survival. And I've been pestering the um, uh, the devs for can they please do doors like the more doors mod, which is. Uh, a bit buggy at the moment. I'd love to see them come up with something like that. Um, I love some of the aspects. I love their choppers. Um, I love the the structure of their um, walls. Just the, you know, they've made such a simple, easy to use um, building model. Um, I like the fact that they haven't thrown in every single fucking gun known to mankind. Just a few simple ones, um, just to expand on, you know, as the name says, Daisy expansion. I think they've done a great job and they're just getting better. And um, I know it's a topic we've got coming up, so we may as well address it. Um, they're actually going to be, which point was that one? That was the, um, uh, where is it? Which one was it? No, nope, we didn't have it as a point coming up. Uh, but I saw this week. Um, that they will be, uh, in response to a tweet from Minder, um, that they will be uh, releasing the vehicle soon as a separate uh, mod. So that will probably make a lot of people happy out there. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's a good thing. I think, like I say, I think. I think what they're doing though is, and I might be wrong. Feel free, anyone who knows can feel free to correct me. But I think that's literally all they're doing is just making the vehicle separate to the rest of the mod. And I think a lot of people are going to be a little bit. There'll be a lot of people like me will be quite happy and see progress for what it is and go right. That's good. Happy days and just and just be happy with that. But and I think. The community aren't going to really be massively happy until the entire mod is is kind of or the big portions of the mod are split up into you know x amount of of separate mods and i, I can't imagine how much of a ball lake that would be to to do that considering everything that comes in expansion nowadays uh in terms of splitting the mod up into each individual bit that's not going to be happening um the vehicles like Jacob said, are going to be separated off. But kind of the point of expansion was to have it being an all-encompassing mod and remove the need for having 20, 30 mods on the server. I know yeah. that's um, why Spud from Daisy Down Under has it on there. He got sick of, um, and it sort of ties back into what Fubar Bundy said was one of the reasons, that, yes, um, expansion's had its um, problems along the way, but Spud's a big believer in expansion because so many things that he was using four or five different mods to do are all packaged into one so he doesn't have to worry about conflict issues, which apparently is a massive, massive problem, uh, Ben. Um, yeah, I mean, mod conflicts is, a, is an issue, yeah. Um, there's also, I mean, just to, for instance, like, okay, so expansion come out with an update. There's a, there's a few issues for a week to get resolved, and then it's, it's, it's done till the next update. Whereas if you've got 20 separate mods... They might all update at different times. So, like, would you, you know, it's just, would you rather have 20 separate updates and or have it all done in one time? You know, hmm. I'm not trying, might, to, I'm not trying to sell the mod off here, but I am. Kind of. <laughs> if, if, uh, if I had 20 mods that I had to update differently, but they fixed it within a week versus expansions falling bug, which lasted for almost an entire patch of the core Daisy update, I might take the 20 updates. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying anything bad against them. I know they had problems. No, no. They, they tried to hot fix it and they had to revert. I understand it, but I'm just saying like, expansion has had glaring issues that have taken forever to fix, and every time they have fixed these issues, they've introduced new content, and it seems like they're going progressing forward. It's just I think people had too high of standards for them. They think they're a development team from like Bohemia, 
and they're really not. They're they're amazing scripters. They're beyond me. I can't can't even come close to them. But like people have to remember, they're modders. They don't get paid for this. Yeah. You know, they're working free and they're having fun and they're trying to make a, um, an amazing mod. So give them a little bit of slack, let them fix the bugs and try to be pleasant with them. Because I'll tell you what, as a modder, if you come on my uh, web page, my workshop page and start screaming at me, I'm not going to help you. No, I, I totally agree with everything you said there. I mean, the team can take criticism, like 100%. Um, in terms of what you've said there about the glaring issue with the the falling thing, yeah, that was a problem for a while. Um, again, like with everything, you, you kind of not le- learn from mistakes, but, you know, everything's improving constantly. So the way that um, in, in one of the major things that was recently introduced is a change to, to, to the way that... Um, they can hot fix things now, as opposed to having to wait for a big, massive update. So now, if there's a problem like the falling bug, they can hot fix it and get it get it done sooner, as opposed to waiting. They've, they've changed things up in that sense. So there was, you know, every time something like that happens, it's learned from, and then yeah, the team discuss it and react to it. They made a lot of changes internally. You've talked about that before, Ben. Yeah, they realized the, the, they had some problems, and they've done taken actions to address that. A lot of the th- yeah, a lot of the reasons why people initially had a problem with the mod, and they've they've stuck with their opinion of it. It's changed now, and the way things are dealt with is completely different. So, yeah, I mean, as I say, I, I always take criticism, but um, some people definitely might want to sort of revisit the mod, or um, just not go off of things that they've seen in the past because a lot of it's changed now. Oh yeah, definitely. I would encourage people to use expansion myself if you're not modding your um, own server yourself, because you won't have to worry about the scripts and everything else. You're just using yeah. other people's mods. So in other words, it's good modding... for an idiot like me. Yeah. Angle might or something no. might <laughs> You said yes Maybe first. You it. said yes first. <laughs> Either way, look, what I'm saying is if you're not modding your own server, expansion is amazing. Until the vanilla bug is fixed, if you are modding your server, expansion can cause issues, not because it's expansion's fault, but because of the scripts being consumed that is available to all mods. Yeah, I know I understand that. I think the, I, 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 I think Mango or somebody might be out of answer in in, uh, in the chat. I'm sure somebody recent. I'm sure somebody's addressed this issue and made a statement about and um, fixing this this um, this limit to the amount of scripts or something. I'm yeah, sure, it was really I'm weird. Sure. It was, like introduced in 1.07. Like we never had it before, and then. Uh, I've been working with a couple of other modders trying to help fix it, but can't keep, seem to come up with anything. But uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'd, I'd like to put in that uh, I'm really impressed with how uh, how the Daisy expansion team managed to stay polite with people on their Discord. With all with the amount of bile that some people are spewing at, oh. and they kind of uh, provide fee, provide help and instructions and stay polite, that's really impressive. Especially when you yeah, see I'll those guys that. all pulled together playing um, Among Us, um, they're not the nicest of people at times. So it kind of roll surprises you. Why is it that? No, but uh, I, I didn't have uh, expansion on my server for the entire 108 patch, but uh, I still followed the Discord and like kept yeah. tabs on on uh, how the development was going. And uh, no, I'm really I'm really impressed with the with those guys. But you did touch on it, and you know, Mass has said it in chat, and we brought it up many a time before. But some people's sense of entitlement when they're talking to the modders, the dev team, I can understand people getting frustrated. You know, we're paying, we paid for a game, we paid for a product, we accept a certain standard. Um, that said, the dev team now is fucking amazing. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, they're, they're they're only one fuck up away from the community turning on them again. And um, but yeah, the modders in particular. Some people just need to really have a... Oh. Some people, yeah, yeah. Can Some I people say? need to go and sit in a corner and have a fucking quiet five minutes, I think. I think, like we said, like the, the people that will just go into like expansion Discord and other modding Discords and just be like, oh, this thing's broken, you shit, why the fuck is this? Rah, rah, rah. And I just think, how well, well, like, dumb. literally drag you up? 
Well, like Dump said um, as well, you know, if you're going to shout at me in the comments, you go in and you look at some of the, the, the comments people leave to these modders on their, uh, in the Steam workshop, and you're just like, you fucking little cunt. Who the fuck do yeah. you think you are to talk to someone like that? I saw One of the worst I saw was, uh, I can't remember what patch it was, what DayZ patch it was, but it was about a year ago, I think. And it was when um, Dr. Jones, who made the awesome trader mod, he went on vacation on holiday for a couple of weeks. He mentioned this just one, as, yeah. Yeah, just as, and and it, it just fucked everything, just burnt to the ground for that couple of weeks while he was away. And there was nothing he could do about it. And it wasn't his fault. But the amount of people, I, when I'd go on his workshop page for the trader mod and look at the comments, it was like, fix your shitty mod. Oh, your traders are wank. Fuck off. I hope your mum dies. And I'm like, fucking hell. Have a, the guy's having a fucking suntan. Leave him alone. <laughs> yeah, people can get real nasty. I know uh, the creator of OP base items, he pretty much doesn't really develop anymore because of it. Can't That's say sad. I blame him either. I've met That's a few modders that have just jacked it in because they couldn't be arsed with the community after they brought a mod out. So awful. It really fucking is. Some people need to, yeah, pull their fucking heads in and have a bit of reality check. But, um, okay, let's move on to the actual agenda of the show now. Um, the first point is a bit of a contentious one. Um, but I think it's something we need to talk about. What is going on in the Karma Crew, man? They're, they're losing people. Like over the years, they've they've lost some big fucking names. You know, they had Deadly Slob, the Running Man, Smoke. We're all members of the Karma Crew. Now they you know they lost R Diddy a few weeks ago or a couple of months back, um, and Mister OG this week announced it. Now before anyone jumps in, I want to. <clears throat> say my thoughts on the Karma Crew. I think they're an amazing fucking team of streamers. Um, the dynamic between the likes of um, Tope and Minder when they play, you know, there's that video that Vigilante tweeted out of um, Tope um, and Minder just absolutely fucking wrecking people. It's like it's a breeding ground for some of the biggest names in DayZ, and then once people get to a certain stage, they leave. Yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Like I say, they almost seem to be like almost hemorrhaging people now. It's yeah. I say uh, the thing is, it's difficult for us to sort of sit here and 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 speculate, isn't it? Because none of us are on the inside, so we don't know. But like, it's it. There's definitely got to be something going on somewhere. It might not even be particularly nefarious or anything bad. It might just be a case of you know those couple of streamers thought fuck it i'm gonna you know i'm gonna do my own thing and change things up a bit maybe they were feeling things were getting a bit stale for them and they decided to move on but i'm gonna i'm gonna be the devil's advocate and be the arsehole on the podcast here and 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 say i i can only imagine that some of the members of karma crew have got something to do with it and i i can only imagine that I can't imagine it's a massively toxic environment in in that team because, like you said, Boydie, they're they're a fantastic group of of content creators. But I think there's there's a couple of members that we all know have been a bit arsy in the last sort of year or so, and I I can't help but wonder if that might have something, even if it's a tiny little part, but something to do with it. Ben, you were going to say something. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, I know. One or two people that are ex-members of that group. Um, I'm not going to repeat anything they've said to me because that wouldn't be fair. But I'm just going to go off what you just said before. So they've had a lot of people join that um, they reach a certain level and then they leave. So to me, just reading between the lines, I'm thinking that there's something that goes on in that group that limits that person from doing what they want to do or growing more than they are. Something that's being imposed on them or they feel is being imposed on them or that restricts them. Look, I'm going to call a spade a spade as well, and that um, as much as I love them, um, we all know that, you know, barring me, Mind is probably the um, most controversial person in the Daisy community. Um, and he has had a couple of um, foul pars of late, you know, the one where he um, called out Lottie for allegedly stream sniping um, Shroud or Summit, I think it was. 
um, and then he apologised for it. But Minder has, in the past, many times put his foot on it, you know, put his foot in his mouth, I should say. Um, so I do wonder whether that's people just saying, I'm just going to distance myself. Um, I don't want to be associated with that. Um, you know, I've had, um, you know, even one guy we had um, quite regularly on this show, he distanced himself from me. He didn't like the fact that he felt I supported cheaters. Um, you know, I've had people not want anything to do with me either. So I, I do wonder if that's part of it as well, which is kind of sad because it has been such a breeding ground for the, some of the best names in Day Z. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you see all these great people that were that are ex members or, and that, it, it does make you wonder what's going on. Generally, yeah. And to leave. I hope they can fix it. Know. Someone in chat saying, I reckon a new stream team soon. Mark's just saying, I think people join a group like that as a safety net. So they, um, uh, something to fall back on if they don't succeed. And when they explode on YouTube or Twitch, then they leave because they don't need that safety net anymore. That could be part of it as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there could be multiple reasons, like That's the thing, isn't it? Like I said, it's easier to sit here and, and sort of speculate, but until, you know, until someone actually comes out and says, right, here's the reason, here's the situation, this is what's going on, you know, we're never going to know. But I think, you know, I've got my my sort of thoughts mm -hmm. and feelings on it and yeah. my my assumptions. And I can only hope that, that what I've got in my head right now, what I'm thinking is the reason is not. Um, I'm not going to say because it wouldn't really be fair to the, like say to those who have, um, you know, left for whatever reason, but yeah, I can only, like you said, Boyd, I can only hope it's, it's up from here and, and that they whatever's going on, they can fix it and, and get things back on track again. Cause like you say, they're a fantastic group of content creators that all absolutely deserve to be in the positions they're in. Bloody so oath. bloody oath. Um, next topic on the agenda. We have Sumrak tweeted. What did Sumrak tweet? Sumrak tweeted, website right, update. Website it's a live sort of. I am locked away from controlling it for the time being. Things that I may have planned, teased in the, in the last status update, will have to be postponed until further notice. Equals figuring out what the hell is going on with it. Thank you for your understanding. What the fuck did he mean by that um, tweet, folks? <laughs> that's that's what confused me. The, the, the bit where he, where he says oh, he's locked out of it at the moment. It's like... Or how obviously I don't obviously none of us know what's going on. None of us are some rack, but like to me, that's just like how can you be locked out of your own website unless you've got an issue with the actual yeah. website hosting service or something like that, you know? That but then to say everything else has been postponed, does that now mean that Namalsk is postponed or you know, it's 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 a it was a sort of almost like a weird cryptic tweet that was sort of saying something but not saying something at the same time. Jacob Mango saying it was a website provider issue. I was hoping that you would know Ben because I know you sometimes play Among Us with him, and I know um, a lot of the people watching right now play Among Us with him. So yeah, website provider issue. Um, so yeah, that that was kind of back on the podcast because <laughs> that was the first thing I did was jumped onto his website like. What's his website down now? The website was still up, but yeah, just some some sort of yeah, maybe a security issue, Mark. Who knows? Um, you know, there's lots of very very uh, evilly talented people out there who could decide they just want to fuck with Sumrak because he's Sumrak, and the website was down for two weeks. Jacob saying, I can see oh. that being a case as well. Someone just being a bit of an arsehole and going, ah, oh, it's Sumrak. He's you know. It let's just fuck with him let's ddos him let's do this let's do that i can as it pains me to say it but i can easily see someone doing yeah. that just to be a dick and he's the nicest fucking guy as well yeah he's 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 up there with barely infected as the nicest people in the daisy community in my eyes He's he's so nice that he makes me feel shit about myself, and that's not and that's not even his fault. That's my issue, nothing to do with him. But he's so nice, I actually feel like I'm a proper dickhead at times. But Derleth, um, are you excited for Namalsk, mate? Yeah, uh, just not just Namalsk in itself, but uh, the, the fact that the, the project lead for DayZ is the guy making Namalsk tells yeah. me that the, the future for DayZ is is bright like i love survival yes i love the cold survival i like the really harsh hardcore parts of daisy i'm not so much for the pvp side of it yeah I, I like the, the the 
to test myself against that environment. So I really look forward to Namalsk and what its development will bring to DZ. Well, the thing I think um, people like yourself and Dumpgra are going to be interested in is, yeah, he's talked about now he's going to be splitting it into, there'll just be the map and then there'll be the survival mod, basically. And I think a lot of the hardcore survival servers out there are looking at, wow, I can't wait to get my fingers into the codes and see what he's managed to come up with and whether I can play with that and make changes to the other maps. And yeah, it's quite exciting times ahead for... Uh, the hardcore survival genre. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I think knowing that he's splitting them up and making them <clears throat> making the map separate from everything else, I think, like, like, just imagine what sort of stuff he can do. Ignoring the fact of his his position in Bohemia, just as him as a modder, as the creator of Namask itself, imagine what he's been able to create and port that to Chinaris, to Deer Isle, to. Livonia to Chim C to Valning to a lot of these other you know modded maps as well that you know it's 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 going to be a really really interesting next sort of twelve months in this community. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I I was just saying to somebody this morning that I think for the next twelve months the numbers are going to continue to go up. Um, I think just based off of the mouth and Ethica alone, that will. Uh, that's going to bring a hell of a lot of interest in the BR mod as well. I think between those three alone, we get like a year's a year's worth of that still. Yeah, particularly if you end up with um, the likes of uh, Shroud and Summit and XQC and them trying out the Battle Royale mod, and if they like it, um, that's going to be fucking massive for the game. Um, yeah, 100k concurrent players by the end of 2021. That'd be the dream. That'd be the dream. I can see it happening. Like like Ben said, with the with the BR mod and Essica and other things like that, and if if some rat can get in a mouse scout and and hits the nail on the head like we all think he can, you know, it's it's going to be a hell of a next twelve months. Oh yeah. Well, well we've sort of flowed into the next uh, point, which is the battle royale update. Um, I had a bit of a play on it earlier this week and had a fucking ball. Um, ben scared the absolute shit out of me. You cunt. Um, playing the game. I do those scare donations and <coughs> holy fuck, my heart was in my throat. Mark's got to kill me. Um, got it, made a nice little clip on Twitter if you want to share it and embarrass me again, Mark's. Uh, I'm sitting in this bush and I'm all gillied up and I'm like, I can feel it. I'm finally going to get a kill. I'm finally going to get a kill. And because I was in a bush, I didn't have the greatest vision. And I turn and I look, is that a player? Is that a player? And then you are dead screen. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> to be fair, it's not exactly difficult to uh, give you heart failure. I saw on your stream earlier you shit your sap pants because a deer was like <laughs> fucking five feet away from you. So, <laughs> better believe that I'm, I'm hoping that uh, that some legends under the you know like Marks can uh, go back in the vod later and uh, and find that clip out. Oh God, I did. Blind I should have brick. Everyone reckons they can see it walking from the left to right across the screen in front of me. I couldn't see fucking I saw shit. It. I Even couldn't I see saw it. it, and that's saying something. I'm sat there watching. I'm like, that. that, that he looks I like wear glasses. Deer, okay, man. get off my. You make fun of a of a disabled man. <laughs> Only I have, you. I have a genuine disability. My glasses. And the fact well, that you my have monitor a needs disability a... of just being you. I think at this point. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> also, I don't see disability. I see armor. <laughs> but nah, man. Did any of you? Um, I know you have been. I know you've been quite heavily involved in. But any of you other guys tried out the uh, battle royale mod? I haven't had a chance, but it's it's on my to do <laughs> list for the next couple of weeks, definitely. Even if it's not your thing um, with the hardcore Durlef and Dump, still give it a try. I think he's done an amazing job of capturing. The, the heart in your throat moment of PvP that, you know, as much as you enjoy PvE and all the rest of it, still one of the greatest thrills in DayZ is seeing another player. Now, the only thing this removes is there's no interaction, but it's still that thrill of the combat. And DayZ does it in a way, oh, fuck. Have yeah. either of you tried it, Dirk? No, you I have? agree. <clears throat> I haven't tried it yet. But uh, I, I'm going to. I've watched a few videos on on YouTube and a, a couple of streams and so on, and it looks uh, actually great. I mean, I came to DayZ from PUBG once in a uh, like I played uh, 
play on own battlegrounds a lot, and yep. uh, but I got bored with being like bullied into this circle and, and fighting it out. I wanted to explore the map, <laughs> uh, and somebody somebody uh, like suggested, well, take a look at DayZ, and uh, here I am. So I will definitely try this uh, this mod definitely. And what about you, Dump? I mean, I'll give it a shot, but I've never been big into battle royales. <clears throat> I don't find the thrill of PvP being, oh, I can spawn in and collect gear within the, an hour or two and be fully geared and die. I always thought PvP was, I, uh, well, when I play, like, let's say, full Fortnite with my roommate's kid, when I die, I die. Who cares? I don't have a problem with it. You know, my heart doesn't jump into my throat. But when I die in DayZ, like on the hardcore servers, oh, man, my heart jumps into my throat. I'm all like, crap, yeah. I was stupid. I should have been checking the horizon. <laughs> Why didn't I actually scout the town first? So Look, Battle Royales are awesome, but I'm just saying, like, hardcore can be extremely PvP rewarding, and oh, yeah. so can Battle Royale. It's just your oh, yeah. preference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely never going to replace the pure thrill of, you know, running around looting and the next thing shot fired at you and or seeing someone and you both kind of maybe have a gun in your hand or you don't have a gun in your hand and it's like, what the fuck's going to happen? It'll never replace that, but He's done an amazing job. Um, Foxy's saying in chat there, um, love BR, it needs a lot of work. It does. I guess I should. Sorry. I'm sorry, you were going to say? I was going to say, I should say that I hope his um, his mod succeeds and it's an amazing success. Yes. I was just, just stating my opinion of it. But I am excited to see what his mod can bring and what possibilities it can show for the community. He's he's working on a lot of stuff, and the the thing that I like the most about him, Ben, is how open to ideas he is. Like, um, I he was talking about having bears and wolves in the uh, game, and I said to me, to me personally, I'm not a huge fan of that. If I join a battle royale, um, and Derleth, you probably remember from PUBG, the red zone. There's nothing worse than dying to the fucking red zone. It's like oh, RNG fucking killed me. Great. Um, and that's how I kind of felt about bears and wolves. Uh, but then the topic of airdrops came up, and I said, well, why not put bears and wolves on airdrops? So it's not just a simple, wow, I was lucky enough to find the airdrop. You've got to make the decision to go to the airdrop, and then that airdrop has an event around it that, fuck, am I going to risk firing off shots and you know creating a convergence? And he's, he's looking into it. He's looking into the idea of um, just doing little things um and he's, he's open to those ideas isn't he ben oh yeah 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 um there's been discussion on adding um more dynamic events and stuff like that to it make it a bit more interesting but um <clears throat> yeah i mean I, I i played PUBG. um i played it for a little while it's it's all right but the, the novelty of, of it wore off quick for me um to to I loved, obviously, I love DayZ, but the, the combination of the two, just, I don't know, it just works for me. It feels good. I mean, like, it all depends, like, what you're into. If you're not into BR yeah. mode, you're not into BR mode. But um, even during that testing, um, yeah, okay, so I know that when I kill somebody, but, like, when you kill somebody in DayZ normally, you know that the reason why it's intense and why your art pops out of your chest is because you know that your hard work is on the line or theirs is. Yeah, all their hours of effort and all yours come down to that one minute, and either you're going to win and lose all, and gain all their shit, or you're going to lose and you lose yours. So it's not got that in it, but still, like even when I played a little bit of the BR, it did give me that feeling where, like, there was a moment like you where I was in a tree and I must have been in it for about five to ten minutes, maybe, however long the circle was was allowing me, anyway. And I'd been there for ages, and I thought I was well in the clear. And I went to go to a tree right next to me that I'd been planning to move to. And I, and I've gone to go there, and boom, a guy pops out and shoots me. And he, my my, you know, my heart did pop a little bit. It did give me a little bit of the Daisy vibes. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if if you're into BR and you're into Daisy, then I think the combination is going to be great. Exactly. And also, what I think it is going to do, it's going to bring a load of people who maybe seen um battle royale on armor and enjoyed it and, and maybe didn't enjoy PUBG so much. I think it's gonna bring a load of those people to Daisy. I think it's gonna bring 
yeah, I think it brings some focus to Daisy. And even, even bring back some of the uh, the mod boys who bought Daisy Standalone. And Daisy Standalone, when it first came out, was, let's be honest, pretty shit. A bare skeleton of a game. You know, what they have, four or five weapons in the game and a couple of backpacks. And there wasn't really a lot going on. And people quickly got bored. You know, it was buggy as fuck and all the rest of it. So it may bring back some people as well. They've got it installed. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, I'll reinstall it and try out this Battle Royale mod. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's got the potential to bring back people people who used to, you know, play it in the past um, from the mod days and also uh, also potential to introduce DayZ to a, an audience that wouldn't normally potentially be looking to see, you know, looking at DayZ, so the, the whole BR um, scene. So, I, I, you know, I can't see it doing anything but good for the game. No, okay. Yeah, it, it definitely looks like a very, very interesting mod to play. I... I been meaning to get onto it for a while so it's going to be interesting but i'm kind of split on the idea of like wolves and bears being in it because i think we've never really seen in any other battle royale game we've never seen something like that we've never seen animals that attack you you know you don't get that in Fortnite. you don't get that in call of duty war zone so i think it's going to be an interesting new challenge if he does decide to bring that in at any point hmm. um but at the same time I know that I will get so fucking rage quitty if I'm sat there stalking someone, then all of a sudden I just hear Rawr, and a fucking grizzly comes and fucking slaps me around the back of the head. Like that's that's straight up Falcon Punch through the monitor level. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, the next topic um, is one that I, it's about me. Um, Cheaters in the spotlight. So I did a poll on Twitter. Um, I get the feeling that people think I support cheaters as I've given them a platform to talk about what they did in the past. Is that what you believe? Let me know your thoughts as well in comments below. So 30% of people said yes, they do think that. 70% of people said no, they don't. What do you guys think about it? I think 30% of people on there are fucking idiots, <laughs> quite frankly. The, the, the idea that you even needed to put that tweet up. And this is not throwing shade on you, Boydie. It's just fucking ridiculous. The fact that you are literally just doing your job and doing something that you're passionate about and people have taken that and gone, oh, well, he, he supports cheaters then. It's like, no, that's that's literally not even close to how that works. You can't jump from one conclusion to the next with fuck all evidence uh, like that. The reason, right, that I, the reason I posted it was... I watched a video and I shared a post on um, Twitter and it was Ben Fruit's um, July, uh, sorry, August highlights video. Um, I don't know if anyone watched it. Um, it was a great fucking video. But there's a scene yeah. where he's playing with Lax Hawthorne and it's on a um, interaction-y sort of server and so it's on, on the Livonia map and two guys take him to that castle up in the northwest of the map um, and they lock him in the cage that's in the um, castle there. Now, they had a rifle on them, and Ben tried a few times to kill the guys and failed. Then um, the last time he tried, he shot at the guy and um, hit the bar or missed him or whatever, and the guy went around the side where he couldn't be seen. Then Ben knowingly, um, using the exploit of being able to go through windows and so on, jumped at the little window on the side of their little cell they were in and glitched out through the uh, metal bars, not even a window, that you could argue he could have crashed through. Um, and it was a glitch, not a cheat per se, but he it's, uh, I'd probably call it an exploit. Um, and got out and one shot at the guy um, who had no idea Ben was um, going to be able to get out through that window. And then he ran down and he killed the um, guy who was driving off in the car as well. So the way I saw it was that these two people had their experience ruined by an exploit. And I tweeted yeah. out saying, great video, but, yeah, Aussie Rogue, um, um, I'm talking about you later too. Aussie Rogue, technically you shouldn't be able to go through that window. So jumping through a window isn't even an exploit. Actually, it is to Bennett's. Um, it's not how the game is intended. What's that, Ben? You've muted yourself, mate. Sorry, I have muted myself. Um, it's, I think some opinion comes into this. Um, like we discussed it with some rat, didn't we? Briefly, yes, about when they introduced vaulting. And I knew that when they introduced vaulting, the windows were going to be an issue, and they were 
and they need to do a lot of work on them to, to get to the point where you're going to have a window with bars not letting you through and another window letting you through. Uh, I, I, I can't see it being fixed up anytime soon to a state where it's going to work like people mm. think. Like if it's, you know, if it's got a hole big enough, it lets you <clears> through. If not, no. So I think it, it comes down to opinion and, 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 and how you run your server, I, I guess. Really? My my thing so about I, it though was that end of the day, whether you agree with it or not, it's an exploit, and yeah. celebrating it is not what we should be doing. It happened. It happened on stream. It was a deliberate choice by Ben. It wasn't like he accidentally jumped at it. You watch the clip. He lines himself up, and he deliberately knows he can do it. So be it. As I've said before, I've Apple glitched. Um, he, I think I think he may not he may not have known though. he could get through it, Aussie, but he deliberately tried to do it. They are, it happened. That's not the issue I have. The issue is about putting it into a video and promoting it. As it's not something that I feel that we should be promoting in the Daisy community. It's an unfortunate thing because all I could think about was that poor guy was just you know he was hiding around the side. He should have been safe, and he got fucked by. A an exploit of the game, and that see, you talked about a falcon punch moment. If if that had been me, I would have been fucking raging about what happened. Lax Hawthorne's in chat. Yeah. Lax was actually there uh, when it happened, and I, I remember Ben saying to him, "Lax, come through the window." And Lax is like, "I don't know how. I don't know how. How did you? What is this magic?" <laughs> <laughs> You remember, think, oh, I'm sorry. sorry, go on, mate. No, go on, mate. After you. I was going to say, this 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 situation kind of reminds me of, who was it who made a couple of videos where, I mean, and I remember I said I thought the, the videos were Pogger's gameplay, where they jumped out of a window or jumped across. That was Rab Plays? Rab Plays. Um, yeah, Rab. He, yeah. he did two videos like that, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Two yeah, so videos like, like the that. Two, was it the two-story Red Houses? Yes, it was. Went the guy the had this top of the stairs, the stairs and... He yeah. jumps up now, and yeah. If that's if that's not against the rules on that server, then I just call that Pogger's gameplay like outsmarted, really. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, how, it's how you look at it. It's how you look at it. If it, you know. But it's one of those. If there's a rule on the server that says don't go, don't go through windows that have got, a, you know, what's supposed to be a physical barrier there. Then fine. Then it's naughty. If there's nothing on that server telling you not to do that then it's a grey area, isn't it? So people are going to do it unless they're told not to. But Dump Grant, I imagine on a server like yours, mate, that's not the sort of thing you would be encouraging people to do. But how do you police it? Because there's no log that's going to show you. It's going to come down to that he way. said, she said. Oh, well, there are logs. Trust me, I have over 40 logs that do a lot of interesting things. I can track a player minute by minute. But furthermore, if someone has a garage door open and I go in their house and steal stuff, can't say it was their fault. Um, I can't say they didn't break the law because they had a garage door open. I'm sorry. Abusing an exploit is abuse, abusing an exploit, no matter what server you're on. And the fact that you think you have to have a server rule to prevent it is kind of crazy because that's why you get these servers that have like four page long rule lists because well, they're I'm trying to police rules. everything. And it's just, it's just insane. And it's like... How do you how do you not tell people it's okay to abuse a glitch because we don't have a rule? And right, and right oh, Thagoras, you 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 are right there, mate. Who decides what windows you're allowed to jump through? But my my whole issue comes down to it happened, so be it. It does happen, but putting it in a video and promoting it as an amazing moment probably not the best choice of um of moments to include. It's basically. You know, the Apple glitch. It's a glitch. It's an exploit. Probably not the greatest thing to be sharing in a video promoting Daisy. Uh, but yeah, I know he doesn't. And that kind of goes to my next point that, well, I'll, I'll say it then. Uncooper should have known better. Uncooper edits his videos. Probably not the greatest clip to have put into a video. That's just That's just my thoughts. But getting back to the original point, we did talk about this last week, so we are covering um, old ground again. 
the reason why I put my question out was someone actually came back at me and said, this is kind of ironic from you when you've interviewed two cheaters in the past. And I was like, wow, okay, I didn't see that coming. Um, and yeah, I think that, that's a little bit, that that's, that's, takes a bit of a fucking jump. Whoever said that obviously has some fucking good strong legs to jump that far. Yeah, you know I, I mean, agree. There, there, there's a big jump between, oh, I've just seen a video of someone using a, a blatant exploit, which if I'm not mistaken, Sumrak himself, when he was on the podcast here a couple of weekends ago, said that that shouldn't be a possibility and it wasn't an intended thing. Yeah. You know, to, to use that and then jump to, well, you've gone from you use, someone used an exploit in a video to, ah, well, you're a bit of a hypocrite because you've literally just sat and done your job. I think that's a hell of a fucking jump to make. Well, I don't get it. Is this... This is a podcast, right? So we're here to discuss things and, and, and share news and relevant topics. That's what most news programs do. So are the news programs giving a platform to terrorists and drug smugglers and fuck? Are they fuck? They're just reporting the news, which is what we're trying to do here. So I don't, yeah. whoever made that, whoever's saying about you giving a platform to cheaters, I'm just talking out of the ring piece. Yeah, I'll say two things. Uh, one is a quote, which is um, I, I love, is people believe a lie because they want it to be true or they wish it was true. Or no, they're, they're afraid it is true, I bet. Two, um, it's not like we, you go on str these podcasts and tell people in detail how to abuse these exploits. Yeah, that video may have been a little bit easy to like figure it out, but it's not like you've actually told people step by step how to do this. Yeah. You can report an explosion. Don't tell people how to make a bomb. There's a difference, you know. Yeah, agreed. Mm. Um, yeah, thank you. has said there. What about your mate Archie making a whole video about disliking Chinese people? So Ben gets two weeks of flack for this, but your mate can be racist, and it's all right to glorify that via a video. Now, I didn't mean for Ben to get any flack from anyone, and I hope people were at least civil. Because Ben's an amazing fucking creator. He is absolutely killing it. I am so proud of everything that... He was a kid when he first started streaming. He couldn't even have a fucking PayPal account, man. And he's getting six, seven, eight hundred fucking viewers now. He is an insanely, insanely talented and amazing young um, Daisy streamer. Um, but... The video you're talking about with Archie wasn't so much that it was a racist video. He was talking about the issues that those Chinese people were bringing to the servers. The, um, <clears throat> admittedly, Archie likes to push the envelope. Um, I love Archie, but he likes to push the envelope. And his high ping thing was basically what it was all about. He wanted the servers region locked. Um, because Chinese players were flooding the servers he was playing on and they were bringing their high ping. And yeah, he literally was complaining about being unable to use racist slurs. I don't I don't remember that, Rythagoras, but I'll take your word for it. And if that is the case, then yeah, he needs to... No, that's not acceptable. Um, I don't remember that part of the video though, but the part I took from it was about the high ping side of things um he may have i know he likes to push the envelope and i've actually called archie out on this show before right Agoras. um so it's not about preferential treatment we called archie out on the behavior of him and um some of his mods with regards to a female streamer and about it being unacceptable regardless of anything in the background so it's not um me being favoritist at all mate it was just Look, I thought long and hard about making that tweet because I really respect young Ben, but I just I took umbrage at it being put into a video and promoted as something that we should be, <laughs> you know, celebrating. Um, glitches and exploits, regardless of anything, yeah, we we shouldn't be promoting them. Um, and I was just a bit disappointed to see it, but that was a that's a me personally. And what the fuck does my opinion matter? I'm just one fucking grey haired old dickhead um with a few opinions what do they say about opinions opinions are like assholes everyone has one and most of them smell like shit so i do apologize for upsetting anyone um but yeah i'm not saying it was right or wrong but i doubt better on cooper would have even thought this was going to be an issue i could have easily done the same thing in my and exactly and <clears throat> Probably, if anything, this comes back on me. I probably should have messaged him privately, 
But me being the dickhead that I am, I went public with it, um, and I apologise for that to everyone involved. Um, I should have probably just messaged them privately. Um, I think it's kind of an opinion on what it's glorifying, what you don't think is. Um, I don't think Ben's video glorified jumping through a window that had some metal bars that had no collision or was glorifying the interaction. Not, so, it, it sort of is, but it's also that person's experience got fucked over by a glitch. That's what we need to remember. That guy was interacting, sort of role-playing, and because someone jumped through a window, his, his experience got destroyed for content. Let's be simple about it, for content. It looked fucking awesome. It really did, but it fucking sucked if you were the person who got killed. Everybody's got different opinions on it. It's, it's a risk. That's yeah. the good thing. We can all have different opinions on stuff. Yep, we don't always have to agree. And I do apologise for upsetting agree. anyone. Um, what have we got? Dean Hall and Brian Hicks at PAX Online Resurvival Games. Did anyone watch it? I watched, earlier on, I watched about 30 to 40 minutes worth of it. Um, and it was actually, it was really interesting. I think the the thing that I kind of picked up on um, was where they were saying that they had, like hindsight's a wonderful thing. You know, you sort of look back at, at what Daisy was when it was a mod and then when it became standalone and the mistakes they they feel they made and how they're, they've they learned from that to move forward with Icarus uh, and things like that. I, th I think that that was a really good point that they brought up that they, you know, they actually said, look, there was these certain things that we fucked up on back in the day with Daisy that we wish we had done differently. But now we've learned from that. We can move on and, and you know, make it better for the future. So I think I think that's quite important. They've owned up to, you know, I think I've, they've owned up to some of their some of the shit they, yeah. you know, that they kind of did with Daisy back in the day. Um and I, I think that I think that should hopefully satiate a few members of the of the Daisy community, old and new, that you know, kind of were quite happy to shit all over them for for what was essentially, you know, just a, a small mistake with a bit of code or something. The thing um I took from a Derleth, um, did you watch it, mate? No, I haven't watched it, sorry. You definitely need uh, to, you definitely need to. The yeah. the thing I that yeah. made me sad was just how negative an experience it seemed like it was for Dean Hall. What was his baby? What was his yeah, you know, what he's most known for um was something that caused him so much grief. Ben, did you watch it? No, I missed it. Missed it. Dump, did you? Uh, I can't say I had time. It, it was sad, wasn't it, uh, Brim? Just how yeah, you like you almost wanted to reach out and fucking hug the guy and just say it's all good, mate. It's just a game. It's all good. It's. I think it speaks to to his strength of character as well, though, for not only for him but also for Brian as well. With uh, we all know the amount of vitriol and absolute shite that was that's been thrown at those two over the years. By, by various members of the... Well, I wouldn't even call them members of this community. They can fuck off, truth be told. But, you know, it's to see that they've they've gone through all that shit, taken all of that in stride, learnt from it, worked from it, and have now moved on. Like, I think if I was in their, in their shoes, I don't know that I would have gone as far as they have now to move on and, and start making this Icarus game and various other things, because that's that's got to leave a sour taste in your mouth. Yeah. It is good to see the dream team working again together. Yeah, it's it's funny as well as how like that they just seemed so in that interview, just sat there naturally, just bouncing off of each other's energies yeah. and like finishing each other's sort of not finishing their sentences, but finishing their their point and moving it forward to the next point and sort of working so harmoniously together. Because I think that's, that's at the end of the day, that's what we all want. We, you know, we want them to succeed, whether they're doing Icarus or a different project or whatever they're doing. They could be working the, you know, in their local supermarket stacking shelves, as long as they're happy and they're doing it the way they want to do it. I think that's, that's all we really want to be caring about at this point. I'm just happy to see them going. And from what I can see at the game, like I, I said on Twitter, um, um, that I was a bit disappointed at first when I watched the trailer, but you know I was self-aware enough to realise that I was probably expecting them to make an even better version of Daisy, and that yeah. was my own expectations. 
that led me to be disappointed by what I saw. But then hearing them talk about Icarus is the name of the game, Marks. If someone could find a link to the website and post it in chat, that'd be great. Um, but hearing what they're talking about and the way Brian in particular described, you know, that whole, um, he kind of compared it a bit to the Survivor games um, where um, it's a time frame of how long you've got on each drop. Um, I saw the running man left a comment on there. Um, yeah, basically um, looks quite interesting. You still need to explain to me better why uh, people who've got fucking spacecraft are using stone axes and building log cabins. Um, but the battle against the timer. So it's it's aiming for a more PVE experience, which might excite you, Dump and Derleth, um, as opposed to players. And you do drops down onto the planet and you've got X amount of time to gather resources and you can you know, build a little place to live at. But at the end of the day, you've got to get back to the spacecraft to be able to survive. So I'm actually quite intrigued. The other big thing I took from it, um, Brim, was what they said about this time working with the engine and not against the engine. Yeah, that that threw me for a moment then because when I when I when I watched the video and I was I maybe it's because I'm not as sort of well versed in these things as the rest of you guys are, but I sort of sat there and and as soon as he said that, I literally paused the video on YouTube and I was like, Well, fucking yeah, dickhead. Why would you work against the fucking engine? That's just common sense, <laughs> surely. Work with the technology. And then I thought, well, actually, no, you're right there. Yeah, you, you do kind of need to think about that a bit more. Because that was, um, they kind of explained one of the things that really threw them with DayZ is that, you know, Armour 2 couldn't do what they did and they were trying to work against it. And then they made this, you know, basically came up with this whole plan of this new engine and, you know, they were constantly having to fight the engine as to what they could and couldn't do. So it, it was... If for you modders especially, it is definitely a an interview to watch. If two idiots like me and Broom can watch it and be astounded by the stuff they're talking about, those of you with a more technical understanding will probably get so much more out of it than we did. Me personally, you know, when Brian streams, when even when Dean streams, I usually try and go in there just to hear the ideas that come out of their head. The other thing that um uh, was quite surprising for me, Brim, was. Um, Rocket saying that he's not doing any more coding on the game. He used coding as an escape on Day Z. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if I got that far into the video or not, but yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it all pans out with that game. Yeah, like I say, I think every, everyone's sort of got this idea of you know, the dream team are back together, they're going to make this game. I think everyone kind of assumes that they're going to make. A game similar to Day Z, and I guess they kind of are to a degree, um, but it's it's still at the same time it's vastly different from what Day Z is or ever was. So yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of people that are going to be, and it's going to be those same people that were that were exactly the same, you know, on Day Z back in the day, and some that still are. They're going to be like, oh, this is broken shit. Why have you bothered? Kind of thing. <laughs> but you know, it's. I'd, Oh, it's yeah, just can you, mad. Can you imagine the shit he'll get if there's anything wrong with that game? <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can see it now. Someone's going to go on the day that game comes out and there's going to be like a tree branch that's just slightly off. -kilter. Fix your shit. Fix, fix your broken fix game. Your shitty game. Mate, Fuck um, you. You're terrible. Like, oh. First broken thing, there'll be there'll be a tw uh, comment on Steam saying Daisy 2. I bet you. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as Reddit's, Reddit's going to fucking blow up. I, I'm going to have to. I think we're all going to have to stay off reddit especially oh. the daisy reddit for like the first week or two of that game being released because if i'm not mistaken they're releasing it as alpha as well yeah so right. that 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 whole a word there is a little bit of a swear word in this community isn't it so Here we go again yeah that's almost as bad as <laughs> uh, as, the, as the b word that we uh we try not to use so i think yeah it's 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 gonna be a it's going to be a cesspit for the first couple of weeks. I think it's going to be horrendous. Yeah, yeah but it's uh, but it's an interesting uh, game. I think. I mean, it's much more interesting than it would have been if they've decided to make the same game a third time around. So uh, no, I'm going to follow yeah. the development. I don't think I'll get it in early access or anything, but I'm definitely going to follow it. Yeah, definitely. And he's got some amazing people. Like um, he's got a guy on their team who wrote the, a book on how to make a game from Unreal Engine. Um, so 
Uh, he's definitely sparing no expense of the team that he's trying to get together. He's got people from other games. I can't remember um, what other games it was, but he's, he's, he's definitely building a an all-star team to help him with this game. Yeah, from from what he was saying, like from from an uneducated Muppet like me, hearing him talking about the kind of people he's got on that team that are working on that game makes me just basically assume that this is going to be the most polished thing you've ever seen. But obviously we, we know that's never going to be the case for any game, regardless of whether it's a triple A title or not. But yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with it and where they go. Cause I think I was in that same boat as you, Boydie, when I first watched that first trailer and I just sat there and thought, oh, that's a bit of fucking shit. Considering what, you know, who it is yeah. that's making it. We, I think we all have that expectation of, you know, how much, considering how much we all absolutely fucking love Daisy just to, to go from Daisy to then seeing that trailer and just sort of go, Oh, well, that's a bit fucking, you know, mm. you fucking got where's, me erect and the finishing me off. Yeah. And it's, it's like, yeah. And it's, but I think that that whole timer thing is going to really, I think Brian said it as well, is having that moment where, you know, you jump down and you're running against that timer. It gets your heart pounding. It's that PVE aspect that hasn't been fully hashed out with Daisy. Like Daisy is good as PVP, it's good as PVE as well. But the PVE side of things for the base game hasn't really been quite, I think, what those two guys wanted it to be. So... I think since they have sort of kind of learnt from from Daisy taking that forward, I think it's going to be adding in like a timer feature and things is going to make it really, really interesting. Now, speaking of making survival games, someone else said they wanted to make a survival game. Shroud. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. But um, the uh, way I found this tweet was, um, yeah, yeah, he shat on um, Scum big time in the video. Um, and what is it, uh, Flame and Scott? I'm simply disappointed by the lack of research um, you have conducted, Shroud. Being in the position you're in, I would have thought you would feel some social responsibility in what you say, but clearly you do not. Defamation of character is a thing. Get legal to confirm this. Um, there was another... Well, I'm not sure why it's coming up... Um, uh, there it is, sorry. We should introduce you to our cleaning lady. You have a lot in common. For example, an amount of knowledge about game development. You could even learn a thing or two from her. After all, she was much closer to making games than you ever did. Oh, that, that tweet, that tweet legitimately breaks me every time. It's such a shit cunt comment. I fucking love it. But at the, at the same time, like I can't blame the guy. I really can't blame that dev for tweeting shit like that because... Like I watched a little bit of, of one of the videos and it is literally just when Scum was, I think, first coming out and they were talking about how they wanted the survival aspects and Shroud was lit. And it brings up an old fucking thing with Daisy as well from, from a few months back, just bitching and moaning about rain and the weather and having like, like different clothing doing different things. You think, yep. yeah, that's a survival game. That's what Scum is supposed to be. And Shroud sitting there going, I don't like that. I don't, I don't want my raincoat to work and I don't want my jumper to get wet. And you think, oh, for fuck's sake, really? Dubgra, you look like you've got something on your mind, mate. Oh, I watched the entire thing of him pretty much bashing Scum and uh, it, it kind of made me giggle a little bit because if he does try to do this game, I think he's in for a little bit of a rude awakening about what it really takes to even develop a basic mod for a game, as well as even actually produce a game. Not to mention how much hate he's going to get if the game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were just talking about, uh, you know, the creator of Day DayZ mod. How much hate did he get for when they first released Standalone? Yeah. And his mod, people loved to death. Like, they loved him. But he released the standalone shade like crazy. Now you're gonna have a Twitch streamer slash very famous person goes and makes a game. If it's not good, it's gonna suck for him. Derleth, you were chuckling away. Derleth, you were chuckling away there as well, mate. Yeah, yeah. I watched the video and I read that that tweet. And uh, I mean, what bugged me with the video is that he gives out about uh, scum not having any progress but it's very obvious that he hasn't actually played it again since uh, he tried it the first time 
Yeah. He goes. He's going by hearsay. Yeah. And uh, oh, <coughs> that's not a good thing to do publicly. I think. Well, well a guy we've really had on the show, a guy we've had on the show, Pathfinder, is um, uh, been doing videos on it, and it's been amazing. Um, what was that in the comments? Uh, one of the people posted in the comments, and I actually fact checked this myself. Scum has been out for like two and a half, three years, and it has had it was like seventy updates, with yep. like over like one third of them being major content updates and fixes. So it was just kind of interesting because like <laughs> if you look at the, if you look at it and you do your research, you can see that they weren't lying. We all just got fucking roasted in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, Rage! Wow. That is the best burn wow. we've ever you can fucking. Have one of them. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm under thirty, you bastard. You can have one I of them. No, you. You know, you've got me paranoid now. I thought I was looking good for my age. Wait, am I old? I think yeah, we exactly. all are at this point. We're all, I think we're all old now. Oh my I god! Think that think was the only one that's come out of that unscathed since he hasn't got a webcam on. Yeah. <laughs> With age comes wisdom, and I'm happy I'm old. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. no, nah, man, I'll pay that. I will pay that. That was good. That was good. That was good. That's <laughs> shocking, shocking behavior. <laughs> but, um, Ben, um, the one thing I took from it was, um, and again, um, this will be uh, Ben Fruit uh, 2.0, but it was very unprofessional for Shroud to say that. But at the same time, I think the the way the company handled it was wrong as well. What they should have done, in my opinion, was reached out to him and said, mate, how's about we uh, do a um, stream with you and we show you what's actually changed? Rather than yeah. getting salty and firing up back at him, which you've done in the past yourself, when, especially when you've had a few too many beers, you fired up on people in the past. Um, but a much better way for them would have been to have come, reached out and, yeah, just... Mate, you may think that, and we know the game wasn't what people were expecting when it released, but a lot has changed. And if you followed Pathfinder's videos on it or anyone else, a lot has fucking changed. So much so, I've been, I've still got it installed. I've been thinking of firing it up again myself. What about you, Ben? Um, I don't have a lot of time for other games at the moment. I'll be honest, but um, except Among Us. Well, yeah, well, I get a bit of Among Us, yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the yeah, the way that was handled, not very good. You can often turn a like a shitty tweet into a good one. Yeah, like, like you know, Jakub. Or all, all, you know. So he could, yeah, they could have definitely come back to him and span that around into a situation where they could have got him on the game and they they could have showed off all the changes. And he could have been putting out a tweet completely different the next day saying, oh, shit, actually, it's really good now. Look at the progress they've made, blah, blah, blah. Uh, instead, they've just fired back like a salty kid. It's not very... Uh, yeah. It's not, good for, it's not good for PR. It's not a good PR thing. <clears throat> and not when... They could, have, they could have completely spanned that around into a, into a positive situation very quickly. But at the okay. same time... We got to look at face value. We don't know if they PM'd him, him or not, or they even tried to converse privately and Shroud was rude to them or didn't even care. And that's why they yeah, yeah. responded rudely. True. But it, it, at the thing, a lot of possibilities, but their PR response overall, I think, was very unprofessional and they could have done better. Mass in um, chat is saying he's spoken to the Scum lead dev directly and he says Scum will support modding like Daisy in the future. So you can expect a churnerous remake in Scum from me. See, that's my biggest issue with Scum, is I don't like the map. I don't like the layout of the map. I think the fact that you can spawn and be five minutes run away from a high-tier loot military base is fucking ridiculous. I like Daisy's system of you need to progress through the stages before you can make it to the Northwest Airfield or the fucking Tizzy or the, you know, the Southwest area in um, Livonia. Um, the robots... <clears throat> The robots I'm kind of apathetic about, they tried something. I'll, I'll at least give them credit for that. I think they're a bit OP. Um, one of the worst ways I died in Scum was I was running, um, getting out of the airfield with a lot of really cool loot, um, and then my character, um, I bought the um, one of the really good packs for it, 
um, and your character would shit out items, but he would always do it when you least wanted it. Like he could shit out just either a can of food or he could shit out a pistol. And my guy just stopped mid fucking run, dropped his pants and started shitting and the bot was coming and fucking best massacred me. And I was like, well, great. That was fucking awesome. Um, that's-, that's literally, that's the only thing that I want for Daisy. If, if they can add in that 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 whole thing of being able to stop and just take a piss, take a shit, that whole animation thing, if they put that into Daisy, I will then at that point consider Daisy a finished game, and I will love it. <laughs> they already have like, a way for you to poop yourself. They what? Yeah, just play Daisy. <laughs> you ever you ever kill you ever kill a guy? You know the flies around him. There you go. It's one way <laughs> of doing it. But like I've got like six hours in scum, and I, I I was on the same like I hate those fucking mechs. Those robots are just they're too much of a ball lake. Like I haven't played that. I don't even have scum installed anymore. So I need to get back on it and have another look at it and, and yeah. really sort of you know figure things out and not do a shroud. But you know it's it, it's one of those where it's I think it was just such a ball lake at the beginning, like when I first got it. It was still early access. I don't know if it still is now, but it's it's just one of those where once you get to that point of you can't sneak anywhere, you have to spend like fucking five out of those six hours just trying to sneak past one pissing robot that's gonna you know destroy you in two shots. You've yeah. got no chance. There's there's no there's almost no point firing that game up when I last played it. Derleth, did you ever play it? No, uh, it has robots. That killed it for me. <laughs> Mate, it so is, it's I never worth, even considered it. It's worth looking at, um, and I said this earlier yeah. in the stream, for one aspect of Scum that I love is their crafting system. It makes Daisy's crafting system look like fucking play school compared to university. Scum, you can basically just have all of the stuff you need lying on the ground around you, and the game recognizes that, and it, it involves... Daisy's got a very simple combine one item with another item, craft something. You can combine multiple items on in their game um, as long as you've got them either on your character or in your vis- immediate vicinity, and you can craft with it. It is just fucking next level, their crafting system. If Daisy could have half of that crafting system, I would be a very happy man. That is when I would consider the game finished, not just because you can shit your pants. Um, and on that, apparently there is um, uh, motion tracking footage of Dean Hall doing bodily um, evacuation animations. Um, Brian Hicks always said he was going to try and find the video of it, uh, but they did at one stage plan on putting that into Daisy. Surely, if it if it's been uploaded to the internet somewhere, it's got to be there. It, once, yeah. once you put something on the internet, it's there forever in some dark, deep depth. I don't think it's been uploaded though, but yeah. Nah. Um, See, it's probably it's probably on a hard drive in some in in someone's garage somewhere in the bottom of a fucking box or something that's been long forgotten about. So I can only hope that we can get that uh, get that footage released to the public at some point soon. And Matt's yeah, got found, a good found video of Dean making a, a, a like zombies eating people animation. Yes, yeah, I've seen that one. That's a good video. Yeah, um, Mass is saying in um, chat as well. My problem with Scum's crafting is that you don't need to know any recipes. It's all in the UI, which is yeah a bit of an issue. Bastion RP can be as big as GTA RP. What's that about? What's Bastion RP? I think it's a server random server advert Sorry. never yeah. heard of it that's all right i don't mind <clears throat> okay next um point is aussie rogues tweet now this was a good tweet am i the only one who stays away from day one livonia because there are so many other streamers on there now i touched on it um, um a little bit earlier in my stream but <clears throat> it's almost become a victim of its own success, in my opinion. It just, I actually replied and said, the the reason I don't play it anymore, not just because of the ping, you know, I, I still play US-based servers. Um, that doesn't bother me. But I just worry now that it's full of either people trying to, um, you know, run into, or legitimately, you know, there's nothing wrong with, I know XYZ plays on that server. It'd be great if I bumped into them. But you have to wonder if some people are stream stalking um, slash stream sniping. But the thing that worries me the most is 
the ones who are um, going on there just to fuck with other people, to ruin yeah. streamers' days and all the rest of it. Everyone knows now um, that the big name guys are playing on the day one Livonia and day one Chernera service. But yeah, it was interesting that Aussie tweeted that out because I'd actually been feeling the same. And yeah, you're nodding your head there, Brim. Yeah, I mean, I I haven't had that issue. The on, the only two confirmed content creators that I bumped into on day one, one was Mister OG, um, and that was purely I. There was the literally within about ten minutes of at first ever joining that server, had no idea he or anyone else was on it, and he literally we bumped into each other both fresh. He was like, "Oh, can you do me a favor and kill me? I'm trying to get to a different town." And I just boxed his fucking head off his shoulders. And he was like, cheers, mate. And that was it. And then the other one was Uncle Ray Ray. And you know when you're about to fucking bump into him. And I get on with Ray Ray really well. So I was happy to bump into him. But like for me, the reason I don't play on that server massively often is the fucking queue time. And I, and it's it's a positive and a negative all in one neat little bow because... You like you love to see that someone like Smoke has set up a server. Yes, a multiple. In fact, he's got six, three Chinaras <clears> and three Livonia that are doing really well. So massive love to him for that. But at the same time, I sit there and I think, I've like if I want to stream my, if I wanted to go on that server and stream playing that server, I'd have to get up like two hours earlier than normal and like start the game up and sit in that queue and then hope that. It, you know that i can then start my stream a little bit later on and the queue's gone down enough because otherwise you're sat there and when you're like me when you're a small streamer like me that has lucky if i get half a dozen viewers at any given time whilst playing sitting there trying to chat shit to like three four people or whatever you know whilst you're waiting for two hours to get into it's just not what people want to sit around and wait for no ben what do you think mate um, I think I touched on it once before, but um, like I've nothing bad to say about the server at all. Um, the only thing that I think is going to happen on there is that, well, first of all, I mean, half of that queue, I suspect, will be people, like you say, that are just going on there to go and find XYZ streamer, um, which is a shame for all the other people that just want to play on there. Um, but I mean, again, like the success of, is. I think Smoke who runs the server, you know, he can't be blamed for its success. You know, no, I mean? God no. Um, but the only other thing that I see becoming maybe becoming an issue with it, well, it's not so much of an issue. It's just something that I think will happen, is that it will it will burn out for content wise for for a, a quite a few streamers. In that eventually they're just not going to get any. They're always going to be bumping into somebody who's playing a role and not being natural. And like half of the great things, like one of the great things about interacting with, um, you see people in streamers interacting is when they just bump into some really random wacky guy who's just being completely himself, but he's, he's you know he's he's a great piece of entertainment. I don't think you're gonna eventually. It's just gonna be streamer bumping into streamer, and they've either got to let each other know who they are because they probably recognise each other's voice anyway, or they've both got to then act out a role, which everybody knows they ain't, that, that they're not you know I just, I just think it'll fizzle out a little bit in terms of content for some streamers yeah. but, but apart from that i have nothing bad to say about the server. oh god yeah no. i think I, th <clears throat> I, th I think there's there's only so much that you can do as, as amazing as daisy is and as amazing as those servers are there's only so much you can do there's only so many different avenues you can go down different play styles different rp elements to it that you can do and i agree with ben i think it's going to get to the point where because every fucking streamer is playing on it all day, every day, and getting content constantly. There's such a, a high turnover of content now coming from those servers. It's going to get to the point where, like Ben said, it's going to fizzle out. It's, you're going to run out of ideas. And at that point, everyone's going to go, right, well, on to the next good server. And then they're going to jump ship to a different server. And then those servers are going to die. I hope that's not the case because they are great servers, regardless of you know whether you've got 20 30 40 streamers on there at any time but it, you can see it's it's going to go downhill eventually and it, it's a shame i don't want i it hope to. it doesn't because if anyone deserves success um it's smoke 
Smoke is yeah. one of the true gentlemen of the Daisy scene as well. He's almost like an American um, version of Barely Infected. He's just humble. He's just a, he's a great. Uh, he knows so much about Daisy, um, and he's just he's an absolute fucking gentleman. Um, but you know, this isn't um, uh, having a cheap shot at him or anything. But yeah, I just I felt the same about that server. Um, in just that, it kind of lost interest for me because, yeah, it's. <clears throat> I, I I'll be perfectly honest. I'm not even really a fan myself of massively high pop service. I like to just wander around, and the chance of bumping into someone when you do, oh my fucking god! Yeah, you know, I was on my server, handful of people on there. I heard a shot. It was like, do I go towards it? Do I? No, I, I'm not a fighter. Um, there's there's obviously a fight or something happening over there. Fuck that. I'm going in the other direction. Um, yeah, that's just that's me personally. So, but the the best part of um, his success has been the amount of people who are playing Livonia again, um, which is it's such an unappreciated map in my opinion. I love Livonia. It's almost like discovering the game all over again with Livonia. I think so many people were so pissed off that 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 Bohemia decided to charge for Livonia that now it, it sort of if it had that in that, that that sort of when it first came out it had that instant sort of uptick and then sort of plateaued and died off a bit but now mm. i think thanks to those servers and a lot of other servers that are running livonia now Le, the livonia servers themselves are starting to start to see more people play livonia yeah. and i think i think it's a good thing because livonia is genuinely a decent map you know there's there, obviously there's teething issues there's always going to be bits and bobs that people don't like and things like that but overall i think it's a pretty decent pretty polished map that you know deserves a lot more love than it than it's gotten up to this point xyz's got a uh comment in there I, I, I was chuckling at that name before because um ben said you know xyz streamer and there's someone in chat with the name xyz uh, but i stopped playing day one because of all the pop and because no one goes south and that's a, that's one of the issues i've heard people say with um livonia is that there's not enough really down south um to attract people to go down there you could find military loot at the you know there's a number of military bases some quite close to the spawn areas too and the main military base isn't really that much of a of a base to bother going all that way down south from um and then you've got that one town all the way down in the bottom uh, right hand of the corner dolnik i think it is it's just it's a weirdly designed map but me personally i love it and i've my server, I've been designing it so that, you know, the majority of the airdrops, those who will play on my server and are watching now know where the majority of the airdrops all happen down south. You won't find, I think I've got two locations up in the north side of the map. Um, the rest of them are all down south in the forest um, <clears throat> just to get people travelling the map. It's it's not quite as well designed, in my opinion, as Chernerus is. You know, Chernerus is everyone's bay, but yeah, Essica um valnick and the other ones that we've been talking about um will be very interesting to see what they do but i just still love livonia myself because i still get lost on it um it's a beautifully designed map like it's very uh aesthetically pretty to look at um but i know there are some issues with it um i want to read aussie rogue's comment because it is his tweet we're talking about here Firstly, I love the server and used to play it. I constantly see streamers running into the same people over and over again. I also don't want to come across as a cloud chaser. Say I ran into a big streamer a few times, that's exactly what people would think. And I also get intimidated by big streamers. I still get that starry eyes thing. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I had Mr. Blackout randomly pop into my chat the other day. Um, and I was fucking giddy as a schoolgirl. Giddy as a fucking schoolgirl. He nice. is one of my all-time heroes of Daisy, Mr. Blackout. For me, he's on the same level as Frankie, if not higher in my opinion, um, because his videos, his hardcore and diary series were just next level fucking shit, man. He was the bomb. One of, if not the best Daisy content creator in my opinion. His choice of music was just, oh, oh. I need some alone time. <laughs> Ozzy's saying he ran into Baby Nays once and he's one of my favourites. I couldn't compose myself. Baby Nays is another lovely guy as well. Um, 
and we're looking That's something we seem to be guest. seeing a lot more of at the moment as well we seem to be seeing a lot more of of sort of that quote unquote nice guy streamers and i and i, I you know i don't mean that in a negative way by doing the air quotes but i mean there's genuinely seems to be like baby nades like mr blackout there seems to be a i think it, i think part of it comes with that uptick of how having a lot of more players now and a how easy it is to get into streaming, but there's a lot of there's a lot of streamers out there now that that are those humble, decent guys that aren't just being you know bell ends. Mr. And Blackout's arrogant. nice until he's about half a bottle of gin um, down his gullet, <laughs> and then he changes. <laughs> I would be as well. Gin's fucking awful stuff. Oh shit! Um, what else have we got? Um, discussion point. Um, Rythagoras's uh, tweet. Um, Oh no, we just talked about that. Um, so that was part of the no, previous the, uh, thing about Yeah, ben that was three, that it? was part of the Ben Three thing. So we've already talked about that. So um, I did have that as a uh, topic that we were going to be discussing, but we've already covered it. So we can move on to the next point. Console turn for the base building challenge. The Daisy Twitter watch. So they um, when they did the uh, PC. Um, experimental build. A lot of people straight away, well, what about console? What about console? And they said it's coming. And now that um, 1.09 has dropped, they have announced it. So if you're watching this and you're a console player, hello, survivors, base building challenge for consoles. Yes, now it's your chance. The two winners will get the opportunity to have their own flag in game. Follow the link for more details. So check out the DayZ Twitter. Jump on it. Scale speeder, if you're still around, I hope to see you put an entry in, mate. And now can all you console plebs stop fucking bitching? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. It's all I see on every single fucking Daisy tweet. What about console? This is broken. That's broken. Fucking get on our level, mate. For fuck's sake. We've been at this for like we've been at this since like 2013. Calm your tits, sit down, turn your fucking PlayStation off and go and have a cup of tea, fuck's sake. <laughs> PC master race, eh, Brim? fucking shocking i never thought i'd turn to the dark side with pc i've still got an xbox but that's hidden in my fucking wardrobe now <laughs> scale speed says fucking. he's on it already good to see mate good to see um the other um topic i had from the uh daisy twitter um they're doing a competition not with an actual prize but again it's good to see them engaging with the community um clip of the month please submit your favorite daisy clip of the month below to get some laughs um so they've already um started having people our own marks has um put in a um clip as well but jump on it load them up and yeah they've had 184 responses i guarantee about um uh 70 percent of that will be people saying fix my fucking yeah 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 um or something along those lines but we all know that's the case don't we derleth Oh yeah, I feel sorry for the Daisy Twitter. Oh, yeah, I, I you wouldn't you wouldn't catch me having a deal with that. I they they couldn't they could never hire me to do that. Whether it, I would love to move to the Czech Republic, I wouldn't have a problem with that side of it. But doing the social media, I'd be sacked on my first day because I would <laughs> I would I don't deal with that shit. Like you talk to me like shit, you're gonna get it back, and you are and not that, gonna enjoy yourself. Ben, I reckon yeah, like you'd I be interested. Earlier with, so, the, with the expansion crew, that staying civil under that yes. barrage of uh, negative stuff, it's impressive. Yeah. Ben, I reckon you'd have fun with the Daisy Twitter account, mate. I'd be sad. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Ben would be down the dole office together with a, with a bottle of white lightning to share between us. Ex-community ex -community manager, yeah. I wouldn't last five minutes. I, just alone, like the other day there was... Um, I mean, it's been a meme for too long, and I, I, I can't believe people just don't even know about this still. There, there was a post about it, I think it was a PC got a Battle Eye update or something like that. And I think three comments, three comments down within like two minutes, there was somebody saying, What about Xbox getting da -da 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 fixed? And I'm like, Is this just going to go on forever, this meme of what about Xbox? I wouldn't be able to handle that. <clears throat> I'd, my reply would be, uh, Brutal. Derleth, you were saying that you um, have white knighted the um, game on many forums and that. How hard is it at times to control yourself on Twitter, to hold your tongue when you see people commenting like that? 
I've had years of training. Uh, <laughs> I used to play World of Warcraft before, and yeah. I was uh, regular at the forums there, and I dealt with lots of trolls there. So I've had I've had lots of training, and I'm, I'm an old guy, so I have lots of patience. Yes, but uh, I I regularly did when people start throwing curses and getting really nasty. I either I either just stay civil and keep asking answering questions, or I ignore them. But uh, I uh, I have yet to lose my head on Twitter. I think. I, I probably need to take some lessons from you then, mate, because I'm bad on fucking Twitter. Me and Twitter have a uh, – how would you describe my relationship with Twitter, Brim? Uh, interesting, to say the least. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's like it's, – I think for you, Twitter's like that abusive ex that you just – you know you shouldn't, but you just can't help but going back to. Yeah, sometimes I need to just learn to shut my fucking mouth, but that wouldn't be half as interesting if I did, would it? <clears throat> what about expansion no, it, vehicles? It, we we wouldn't have half the amount of uh, content to talk about on this podcast if uh, Boydy suddenly <laughs> didn't have access to Twitter. <laughs> the world would be a much worse and sadder place. <clears throat> okay, so we're now on to the community spotlight section. Um, I'm going to start. Derleth, tell us about your server, mate. How can people come on and play on it? Well, it's... Just log on. <laughs> Basically, it's it's called Derleth Den. I don't have any imagination, so uh, when yeah. it came to server naming, I just called it Derleth Den. Uh, it's a survival server. Uh, first and foremost, it's like it's tagged as PVE, but I I haven't banned PVP outright. I just want people to interact before they shoot each other. Yeah. Uh, so it's a low population, lots of zombies, and uh, generally just nasty to uh, survivors what mods so have you got I, on like oh what mods do i don't i have but it, it's <laughs> mostly mechanics to improve survival plus a bit of uh, item uh, variety you know i have masses many items i have uh mong hearts and a few vehicles the ones i think uh fit the setting and uh, do like, you have the ammo you know, making mod yeah no I don't have that one yet. I have looked at it, and I might be adding it later. But I have medical attention, perishable <laughs> food, uh, like leather crafting, and so on. So, so it can like act as a survive, proper survival server. Dump grass, sell ammo, making to him in five seconds. Aye, Bodhi likes it. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very good mod for a hardcore server. I think it's just fucking brilliant. Just adds um, an extra bit of um, yeah, a reason for people to be moving around to find the resources they need to keep on crafting ammo. And, yeah, it's it's it's, it's fantastic. It works really well for my server. I might find a use for the VSS ammo. <laughs> I love the VSS. Everyone hacks on that poor fucking gun. I love it, especially in PUBG. Really loved it in PUBG. It was it's so a good open. gun, but I made it extremely rare on my server. Yeah. So I had I had this player who wanted it, and he was chasing it for months, and then I found it. So I traded it for him for a couple of NVGs. Mass, I think he said he's got mass as many items. You said you got mass as many items on your server, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I think, he... it's, I think it's a great <clears throat> mod. It's uh, adds so much uh, variety. You know, like just more stuff. It doesn't have to. But you really have to manage the, the 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 amount of it that drops because the default uh, like types file you get with it would absolutely flood the server with stuff. So you have to work with the uh, with the types to get yeah, a proper yeah. economy. Definitely. Yeah, that's a running joke we have him sent posting in the chat. I made that every time somebody finds a an item in our server that's masses, we just hear mass in the background going, "I made that." <laughs> and Mass actually said that's a, a fair point as well, Derleth. So yeah. Um, what about um, New Dawn? Sell us on New Dawn Dump. Well, New Dawn is a Daisy hardcore server. Um, we allow KOS, but encourage RP, and we encourage RP slash interaction through in-game functions like making ammo more rare. So you have to choose whether or not you wish to use your bullets to kill people or necessarily to go raid a military base um, and plenty of other factors that just encourage choosing making the choice of, do I want to kill this person or do I really want to just interact with them and see how things go? 
Um, our rule sets are really simple. Everything is very well uh, done, and we try to be as professional as we possibly can. But you know, unfortunately, sometimes we can. Um, we have a lot of mods um, on our server. I think it's like 28, 29 mods. Um, but mass as many item overhaul. Uh, oh, can't. Yeah, uh, just um, cars plus. Um, we also have uh, tons of other things plus all of our own custom content. Um, and we're just uh, we modify all of our mods to fit our needs as uh, is fitted. Um, sometimes we don't even have to touch mod, but you know, it's just a really fun server. Um, we've been around for two and a half years, and one of our biggest sayings if is uh, um, nothing um, good is easy, and nothing easy is good. I like that. I do. Um, any update on the Forge mod as well before we move on to the next part? Uh, yeah, since I was now able to now fully direct all my attention on not trying to fix a problematic mod on our server, I can now move on to working back on the Forging mod and trying to get everything up and going again. Um, so I probably will have more updates on the Forging mod coming within the coming week. Um, I have, just for fun made a crossbow. I plan on introducing a craftable crossbow in a forging mod. You can make your own bolts, your own crossbow from scratch. And uh, there's going to be two types of bolts. One's going to have no fletching and one's going to have fletching. Obviously, the fletching will fly farther and stuff like that. Nice. I like it. I think that's the one thing we're missing from from Daisy at the moment with the with the I think is it expansion that brought back the crossbow? Yes. I think is you you have to find the bolts. They're not they're not craftable as far as I'm aware. And I think that's the I think for if you like you say if you're playing like a hardcore survival kind of uh, you know server, then I think that's the one thing you want. You want to be able to craft things a little bit more like yes. that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, can I share one more thing? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna make it so you can make your own nails out of uh, materials like cast iron and pure iron and pure iron. I figured out a way to make it so I can make you build um, any type of base building item but it requires more of the nail depending on the material. So my cast iron nails, instead of being like, let's say 20 vanilla nails, will require 40 cast iron nails or whatever, for an example. I'm really, really excited about that because I didn't want the nails to be one-to-one -one like vanilla and essentially replace not looking for vanilla nails. I like it. I do. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> mod spotlight so windstrides clothing pack uh got an update about four days ago probably one of the best and more professional clothing gear mods out there i think it deserves a mention that was shared um in our twitter by asmondian i'm pretty sure um so yeah. definitely worth checking out windstrides clothing is a very very good mod i do like that one i'd say it's oh, rifle. oh yeah it's an amazing mod oh and what the coolest thing about the mod not I, I know a lot of people know about it is when you get wet, it actually changes the RV mats on it, so it looks like it's actually um, soaked and glistening with water. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Um, and then we also had um, a uh, update, expansion update, one point four point one 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 four, and some mentioned about client side vehicles. Um, I personally would like to hear more about the implications of that. So it got mentioned a couple of times in chat um that jacob said that he was um uh, one of the prime reasons why he was working on the client side vehicles is for the battle royale mod now ben you probably have an understanding of this that's going to make the vehicles more responsive isn't it um well i don't know about more responsive it's going to fix by having them client side it fixes a lot of the issues that um caused the bit uh cars to be helicopters or planes and take off um so it'll fix a lot of that it'll uh it'll make the experience of being in a car much more pleasurable nice nice it so very cool man <clears throat> what else did they introduce with the last um update ben um the very last update yeah for um, um expansion what was introduced or the fix uh, that they just was... did what, what was the what was the fix about 
Um, there was a couple of issues that got fixed. There was one to do with um, flagpoles, I think. That was sorted out. Um, yeah, it was, it was just made mostly fixes for stuff to do mm -hmm. with the... Uh, also, map markers. There was an issue with map markers that got fixed um, where they were stuck on people's screens. That's sorted now. Good to see. And like you said, you know, they've um, changed a lot of what they're doing, so um, we can expect this stuff to be a bit more regular in that as well. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry? I was going to say, the way, the way updates and everything else is being handled now is completely different to a month or two ago. It's much better. Now, my highlight of the week is the one that only baby needs, um, who, as we just sort of mentioned earlier, is going to be starting streaming again. He's got a new video coming in the next two to three days, and he'll be following it up with a final return to streaming. He'd like to do two streams a week, Daisy, of course, and also some other games. I reckon we can expect to see baby nades playing um, Among Us. Um, seems to be the uh, hot game at the moment. Everyone wants to get on board with it. But um, baby nades is just... He's a fantastic creator. His videos fluctuate, um, you know, because he's he's not a um, he's essentially more of a quality over quantity uploader. He only uploads when he's got something worthy of uploading. He doesn't just upload for the sake of uploading, like some do. So I I am a huge fan of Baby Nates. I love his server as well. It's another really good hardcore server if you're looking for uh, one as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I'm really happy to see him um, getting back into the grind of it and um, I can only wish the best for him. What about you, Brim? What was your highlight? Um, I haven't really seen much in the way of YouTube <laughs> videos and stuff this week. I've not really been um, not really been around the YouTube side of things so much. I think the only... I know uh, Mr. Nobody uh, did put out a video the other day where he did a, a stream snipe event where you were him and a bunch of others were hunting down uh, the musty chapstick and that was quite a quite a funny one he did have some very very lucky kills in there um so yeah and he's he's a decent guy i've actually had the had a chance to have a run with him so you know it's it's quite good to see see he's uploading a little bit more now we just lost Durleth. i'm guessing he had sent me a message but i didn't want to open it um well i had the uh stream up so um I'll check that message later, Derleth, and thank you so much for coming on. If you did, um, Ben, what about yourself, mate? I, I'm 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 useless this week. I haven't been able to watch any YouTube videos at all. Uh, oh, it's not always I've about managed... a YouTube video; just about anything in the Daisy community. What's your community um, highlight? You always cover everything before I can come up with something. That's the problem. <laughs> That's yeah, I think you covered everything, mate. You covered everything this week. What about you, Dump? It's uh nothing like brand new um that i can uh speak of but you know just in what? general i've been i've been happy to see the rise in survival servers lately in hardcore servers you and you're looking to do one it's, yourself aren't you i'm thinking about it i am i am thinking about it yeah i've been looking i've put some resources aside well, um, I, I know a guy yeah, who I mean, um, might be able to help you. Uh, he's a very, very patient man. He's very, very understanding and always willing to help out um, the hardcore community. His name's Dumpgraff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Never heard of him. Oh, look, I broke my mic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> um, one last yeah. thing I do want to cover is something I only found out at the beginning of the stream. And that's um, that one of the OGs of the uh, Daisy podcast um, has just been diagnosed with um, COVID, and that's Foxy. Um, so I I don't think he'll be you know in any danger or anything like that. He's a fairly young guy and all the rest of it, but it's still one of those things that you know you just you just never know. So my well, thoughts and prayers go out to Foxy. Um, he's always been here for us, and um, I said to him if he needs anything reach out um, because he's going to be off work for at least two weeks and his missus is going to be off work as well. So, you know, it's... Yeah, well, hit that one because he, he, lives, he lives really close to me, really yeah. close. So, yeah. um, and he's actually the first person that I know that has had it. Yeah. Like, that's the first time I've, I've known somebody that's actually confirmed got it. So, yeah, it's crazy. All Wish the best, Foxy. <clears throat> Dumpgraf, thank you so much for coming on the show, mate. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Hopefully I wasn't too much of a bother. <laughs> See, his microphone's not broken, Ben. Hit him up. 
Yeah, I know. It's just, <laughs> it's just burnt me live on stream now. <laughs> no, hit me up anytime. I'm happy to help. No strings That's attached. It. Yeah, dude, I appreciate it. As long as you don't try to offer me stuff, I'm okay with you. We're good. Except bottles of scotch. He's apparently got a bit of a pension for bottles of scotch. Yeah, I'm not giving you my address. I just I just have to get some of the docs here. Dewan, Dewan, can you find out? <laughs> if anyone can do it, it's our resident bad boy. Um... We love him. We love him. Guys and girls, thank you so, so much. It was a great show this week. Um... Next week's guest, let me just scroll down. Um, I might just change the camera because I don't want to reveal all of our guests. Next week's guest that we have coming on is going to be Baby Nades. Awesome. I'm excited for that one. I'm very, very excited for it because he's he's just, he's such a humble guy as well. Um, yeah, he's got his server, does his videos and now he's going to be streaming and that. So it'd be interesting to have him on and chat. And I did an interview with him um uh, mass will sell dump grass address for 20 bucks i'll pay pal you at the end of this mate Gosh. <laughs> don't believe me he doesn't even know where i live <clears throat> you'll get 19 pound 99 pence and not a penny more <laughs> <laughs> but no thank you all so so much thank you everyone in chat um is anyone going to be continuing streaming right now or is everyone um calling it quits no uh, i uh I've got to go and build some uh, garden patio furniture that I gave up on yesterday. Yep. So uh, <laughs> that's going to lead me to some seriously uh, angry and dark thoughts today, I think. What about you, Ben? Are you uh, streaming? Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a pretty, I've got something going on tonight on Daisy. So yeah, I'm continuing my stream. No worries. I'll send everyone over to you at the end then, mate. Yeah, I appreciate it. No, all the best, everyone. Say goodbye, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Well, pleasure to meet you, Dump Grab, by the way. Nice to meet you, buddy. Agreed. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, it's been a, been a great one as always. See you later, boys. Have a good one. See you later, everyone. See you later, guys. <laughs>